Hi everyone, welcome. It's Dave at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Today I'm going to tie a fly for you called the 20 incher. It's a nice stone fly imitation. You can tie it from sizes 4 all the way down to 14. Today I'm using a size 6, 3x long hook. Uh, this pattern comes from Charlie Craven's book, Nymphs. I'm not sure if he's the, the originator of this pattern, but he does a great job teaching. So we're going to use that as our guideline. Like I said, I'm using a 3x long, size 6 hook. This is a 5 30 seconds uh, gold bead, which is appropriate for this size hook. And of course, being a stone fly nymph, we want to fish this down along the bottom. So I'm going to use some .025 lead wire. I can get some off of here. Okay. And I'm going to wrap in about 15 wraps here. Let's hold the tag in on the far side away from you from the hook. I like to start it about over the hook point that gives me enough room and keep your wraps nice and tight. It makes it easier to combine them. All right, so that's a pretty good weight, weighted fly. Clip off the excess. And then make sure you get your tag ends nice and consolidated. Get them wrapped around the hook. That's why I like to keep a sharp tag in when I start tying it in so I don't have as much to consolidate. I like to bring the head out towards the lead and then push everybody back in nice and firm. All right, I'm using Vivas Brown 6O thread. We'll go ahead and start our thread right behind the lead. And we'll build up a bit of a dam, not only to make the transition to the abdomen easier, but also to help keep that lead pushed up into the bead. You can taper this back, make a gradual transition. Our underbody is going to be peacock, and we don't want it lumpy and bumpy. And we'll bring this all the way back to the end of the hook shank. Now, as you'll notice, this is a curved bend. I like that on a stonefly nymph. And we'll end it here right at the back of the hook barb. Go ahead and let your thread unwind. It's easier to tie these biots in when your thread is flattened. These are just brown goose biots. I like to take them off consecutively. If you're going to tie a bunch of these, I would not recommend that you take off 30 or 40 biots at one time, simply because the length and the width of these biots change as you go up the stripped quill. So if you want tails to remain relatively identical, you need to take biots off that are relatively close to each other. If I can get it started here, I like to pull it off with tweezers. That gives me the extra length. But if your fingers are nimble enough, feel free to use your fingers. Okay. We're going to tie these tails in just like we did with the Copper John. The first tail we pick up, the first biot, we want the tip facing away from us, like so. Pick up the second one with the tip of it curled towards you. And then I like to cross them about in the middle. That way you can use your fingers to slide them, even up the tips. Make sure that the biots are parallel down their entire length. And we're going to tie these in about half a shank, maybe a little bit longer. Some stone flies have surprisingly long tails, particularly the smaller ones. So right here we're about half a shank. So I'm going to grip those in my left hand right at my point. I'm going to slide them so that they straddle the hook, like so, slightly above the hook, and turn them slightly towards me. Bring the thread up over one soft wrap, bring your thread straight down. That brings the biots down on top of the hook shank and the thread torque helps to center them. So you have tail like that. 
and then we're going to overwrap the butt ends of these biots again to try to keep a nice smooth abdomen and I like to stop just shy of where my lead is tied in to clip off the butt ends that way my transition is nice and smooth so keep that body smooth and we're going to bring the thread up about halfway up over our lead wire now the rib on this fly is actually floss I'm using unifloss it's a single strand floss if you have the old four strand floss then I suggest you cut off about a six inch piece and tease the strands apart so that you're only working with one strand we're going to tie this in on the far side of the hook right where our thread is hanging capture it with a soft loop and wrap back over it all the way to the tail butts make sure you've got them right there at the butts then you can pin that out of your way all right now we're going to use a little bit of dubbing here it really doesn't make any difference what color it is you're simply um, trying to uh, give your, your shank a base for the peacock pearl that's to come so the underbody I'm going to use hair tron which is just a hairline product hair's ear mixed with antron and I'm just going to use an olive color here a little butt dubbing wax you want to keep your dubbing thin that gives you control over how it lays it allows you to taper it much more easily than a bulky bumpy dubbing rope just a little at a time make sure you overlay your previous dubbing about halfway that helps to keep your strand consistent in width and I don't like to dub any more than just two or three inches at a time or you'll end up poking yourself in the eye with your scissors so we'll start right there at the base we want to make sure that this dubbing covers our underbody smoothly. It's always easier to add dubbing than it is to remove it. So go just a little at a time, keep it thin, keep it smooth. And we're going to dub just a little behind the bead so it's going to take several applications of dubbing when you need more dubbing here's a trick don't do this and wait till you can't reach the dubbing that's on your thread it's almost impossible to continue that smoothly unwrap it make sure you have enough room so that you can continue it with your other dubbing Make sure you always spin your dubbing on in just a single direction, not back and forth. Continue to wrap this just a little bit more. I actually want to make sure we're into the thorax area, and that should do it right there. All right, the next thing we're going to tie in is our peacock. Now, since this is a 3x long hook and a fairly large one, we're going to be wrapping quite a distance with peacock, so you want to make sure that you're using the longest, fullest hurls that you can get. This is, I'm using an eyed stick, and I'm going to use about eight of these. Two, three, four, five, six. Never skimp on the peacock. If you do, you'll end up wrapping near the butts and the butts have very little hurl on them it'll be challenging enough with a fly this long okay so we'll roughly even up the tips they don't have to be exact since we're going to be cutting off about an inch
cut off about an inch there. And because these strands are so long, or need to be so long, I'm actually going to bring my thread back a little bit so that I don't run out of peacock. Again, it's, it doesn't make any difference. We're wrapping over this underbody, which the peacock is going to hide. And then I want to bring my thread back forward to right at about a bead length or so behind the eye. All right, when you wrap your peacock, I like to give it just a little bit of a twist as I wrap it. Wrap it in touching turns, cover that thorax. Now you can see, even with these long hurls, I'm starting to get pretty close to the butts. So what I'm going to have to do is come back with my thread just a little bit. Always tie your materials off anywhere but the top of the hook, particularly if you're going to have a wing case because these little butts have a tendency to poke through whatever wing case material you're using and split it. So always tie your materials off anywhere but the top. So we've got a nice full peacock body there and the trout love peacock. I'm going to get my single strand of floss, dampen it just a little bit and twist it. We don't want to go nuts here with our ribbing. Just a few wraps here to show some segmentation. Wrap it up to where my thread is hanging and again tying it off on the far side of the hook. Like so. Alright, you have a couple of different options for wing case material. This pattern actually calls for a cinnamon tip turkey tail feather. I'm going to be using a different material for you today. This is peacock wing feather. I really like the barring on it. Anytime I use a quill like this for back material, I always pre-spray it with Artitis Fixative. It's a vinyl spray that helps to keep these barbs from splitting when you cut off a piece. And we're going to cut off a section that is just slightly narrower than hook gap. So I'll simply insert my scissors in here and carefully cut off a section that I think will be at least as wide. We can always peel a few fibers off if it's too wide. And you can see it comes off very cleanly. Now with the butt ends, we're going to go ahead and cut them square and we'll check our gap against the hook gap. This is right where I want it. All right. So we're going to tie this in with the butt end, the, the shiny or the, or excuse me, the back side of the feather towards us because we want this nice brightly marked side to be up when we, when we uh, fold it back over. So what you want to do is put the butt of the feather right behind the bead and kind of push it around the hook shank. Your first wrap should be very soft and envelop this feather entirely around the hook and wrap it over it right up to behind the bead. Okay. Looks like I have a sharp end behind my bead and broke my thread and that does happen sometimes. So we'll simply restart our thread. So we have our wing case. Now if you wanted to flash back, uh, you could use Opal Mirage tinsel or something similar. Tie that in first before you tie it in your turkey quill. We're going to use a different process. I'm going to show you how to use UV Cure Epoxy for a flashback on this fly. To simulate the legs, we're going to be using Hungarian Partridge. And since this is a large fly, I'm going to select a fairly large feather. This is where the advantage of having an entire skin comes in. You have a selection of feather sizes versus if you buy just a patch of uh, Hungarian partridge, you get mostly chopped up feathers. So we want a feather. And again, these are going to be our legs. We're going to measure these from the tip. We want a feather that'll give us 
hackles, no longer than about the length of the abdomen. We're going to peel off the fluff here from the back of the feather. Oh, I just broke it. Next feather. Okay. So again, we want to hold it by the tip until we have a division point like so. Take off some of these back fibers. So we're going to tie it in with the tip at the division point over the hook eye. Now we want the very back here where it's going to be against the wing case. We want a little bit of a gap there so that when we fold this feather forward, the feathers won't, the, our legs won't start over our wing case. We're going to hold this where we can tie in the tip directly behind the bead, wrap back over it to the base of our wing. In fact, we need to come back even a little farther. I didn't bring my thread back over my wing case as far as I should have because we don't want to have a crack when we bring this wing case forward. All right, now we can clip off the tips of our Hungarian partridge. And then we're going to use a little more dubbing here on the abdomen. For this, I am using, let's see, I'm going to use a bleach ginger. This is SLF squirrel dubbing. Again, keep your dubbing thin so you can control it. We're just giving this thorax some bulk and a little bit of color here so that when we pull everything over it'll look fine. Let's see where we're at here. Start right at your wing case. Bring your dubbing forward all the way behind the bead. And we actually want this area to be a little heavier, a little broader than the than the abdomen is. So we're going to wrap it forward and back. Keep my legs out of the way. And end up right behind the thorax. Now we bring our hackle feather forward and brush these hackles back where they belong. And at this point, I like to kind of measure where I'm going to be right behind the bead. If I have hackles that are going to extend beyond the bead, I'll go ahead and pull those off. So we have this laying flat right in the middle of our thorax. Make sure that your thread torque doesn't carry it around. So we have our legs split like so. And once we get it tied off, we can cut off the butt of the hackle. And then we're going to bring our wing quill forward. Try to bring your wing quill forward flat. Bring it slightly to your side, again anticipating thread torque. couple of tight wraps, clip it off close, okay now I'll show you a mistake here, I freely admit my own mistakes, when I tied in the wing case I did not tie the thread back far enough over the abdomen to cover the abdomen. So I have a thorax, it's too short as you can see here, plus some of my abdomen is showing, which I didn't want. So that's a mistake that's common. I'm sorry it happened, but at least I admitted it. All right, now we're going to whip finish right behind the bead. We're going to take just a little more dubbing here. Just kind of cover up 
our last thread wraps. It does not take much. We don't want to build up a lot of bulk right behind the bead here. So I'm really just using enough dubbing for about one thread wrap. Make sure your legs aren't pulled in. And now we'll whip finish. Whip finish right in the back of the bead and then pull your thread back hard. This will help to sink that whip finish back behind the bead and against the hook shank. Really snug that back and you'll feel it pop. All right, so as I said at the beginning, we're going to make this one a little different than the model fly. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, thick UV finish. Simply spread it over the wing case. It helps to make it a little more durable and it'll give you a little bit of depth, a little 3D when you're fishing it, very much like a Copper John. Make sure it covers your entire wing case and then it comes over to the back of the bead, that's your anchor point, and slightly down over the end of your abdomen. It's anchored in those two points, then it won't come off with the first fish. And I have a little dubbing sticking up, take that off, and then we simply hit it with the light. So it gives you a slightly different look than the one without the epoxy back. Again, I, I apologize for my mistake there with not tying the wing case back far enough, but that is a good lesson for you. Always make sure when you tie in your wing case, tie it back over it far enough to cover over your beginning of the abdomen. All right, this is the 20 inch. It's a nice stonefly pattern. It's not a difficult pattern to tie, and the materials are not expensive. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. Thanks for joining. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us. We'll see you next time.